Hello everyone, my name is Captain Jack and welcome back to Spaces. It's a Monday which means we're reviewing another creation from the Steam Workshop. Today with me I have the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars. Obviously you all know this ship, it's an iconic starship from sci-fi of all times. Now this amazing recreation is built in space and it is, obviously, and it's vanilla. Completely vanilla. It's a small ship, vanilla. I know what you're thinking there. The last time I reviewed the Millennium Falcon was about a year or two ago and it was really modded and we tested it on Starkiller Base actually. You can go find that video, it was around about the time The Force Awakens came out. Very interesting video. But we're back today, we're so close to the last Jedi coming out, so I thought, let's review another Millennium Falcon and see how it goes. So this amazing creation has been created by Limbo Relic 32 and it's basically just a recreation of Millennium Falcon. We've got the iconic landing gears there, we've got the cockpit, we've got the ramp and everything like that. It's really straightforward and simple. Now it's made in vanilla so you can forgive a few design details such as the non-blue engines and things like that. Those things you can't really replicate in space in this as much to create the sort of like size and shape of it, but I think he's done an excellent job so far. Just looking at some of the really cool things, like the antenna dish up here is really cool because it's actually got an antenna built in. Now I'm actually thinking of doing a battle of this ship, particularly like TIE Fighters versus the Millennium Falcon, because you can actually have a crew on board this controlling the turrets. If you guys would like to see that battle, hit the like button and let me know now below in the comments. I think this Friday we might create a battle between the Millennium Falcon and a couple of TIE Fighters. Like I said, if you want to see it, hit that like button and let me know down below in the comments. I'm really interested to see if you guys want it because it'll be quite fun to create. Anyway. Let's get around to taking a look. I think first off, let's take a tour of the inside. That's what I'm more keen to do. I mean, just look at the inside, uh, the outside here. You've got these vents on there, really cool, obviously, with the thrusters. Let's go inside, right. Love the sort of like um, grinded down metal here to create that effect. So it's obviously got a ramp here. It was already deployed by the time I came down here. But the landing gears are on pistons as well, so they actually retract. Now, one bug I found is they don't actually lock. But yeah, you get the gist of the ramp. But yeah, the landing gears will actually go up and down, which is quite cool, because it makes use of pistons and spacings, which of course now are safe. Let's jump into this. Oh, um, okay. We're on the moon as well, so low gravity. Can I get up here, please? Come on. All right. And we've got another button up here, which you can press to lock that. There we go. We've got a control panel in there as well. Very nice. Right, so we come into Millennium Falcon, the obvious iconic entrance. We go left to right, back to the cargo, which we're going to take first. So we go left, we've got all the cargo space down here. We've got uh, nuclear reactors in here, so like emergency power. This is obviously our sort of like makeshift engine room in a way. We've got more cargo space in here, loads of cargo containers. The ship manifest. Manifest log is outdated, that doesn't surprise me. Current status incomplete. Very interesting. You've got all pipes up here of uh, cargo containers. Is there anything in them? I wonder if they put anything in them. Oh, they did actually put things in them. How cool is that? You can play around the Falcon and actually get things out of the cargo. That's really nice. Anything in there? More ammo. More ammo. Very nice. Chair in here as well. Random chair. This is sort of like our engine room in a way. Base time, you can see what time I'm recording this on a Sunday right now. I'm having lunch in a bit. Uh, reactors, da da da. More power and stuff back here. We've got our hydrogen generators, obviously, to power our engines because this ship is powered on hydrogen power. Hydrogen power, hydrogen fuel. Yeah, that's a word. We've got more vents down there as well of our pistons leading down to the landing gears. Very nice. Pipes all going along here and obviously our giant hydrogen tanks which keep this ship flying. Walking around this way, we've got a little engine sort of control room in here. Loads of ship diagnostics and everything. The grates in the floor where Hans will be down there fixing things and everything. Computers on here to access an entire diagnostic of the actual Millennium Falcon. Here we've got, we've got the integrity, um, the internal integrity. Blocks and T blocks. That's pretty cool. Technical blocks and armor blocks. Very nice. I love how this is actually turning as well. That's quite cool. Because if you stand here and look at it, the diagnostic screen does turn. I want to get that one on my ship sometime. We've got a floor plan scripts here as well. Very nice. Uh, four current errors gravity drive failure, hyperdrive failure, pressurization failure, keen stopwise failure to implement certain small ship blocks in vanilla game. We'll leave that one alone because that'll generate some drama in there, but that's a really good idea of putting that stuff in there. Very nice. Another cargo space in here. I think this is a bathroom in here. I can't actually fit in the bathroom. Oh, this is a crew quarters here, isn't it? Yeah, not cargo space. So this would be Han and Shu will be sleeping, and the rest of the Millennium Falcon's crew. I love the use of half blocks to create this. That's really nice. Nice we actually have half blocks now. We can create more of an interior for starships. Oh, I got stuck in the door there. I'm too big. Another sort of doorway out here. Now, typically, there'd be the other like airlock going out there, but obviously, we'll replace that with the hydrogen thrusters and things like that. Walking around this way, we come into the iconic room of Millennium Falcon. The grates down there where crew would hide, but obviously we, we don't really have much floor space for that. Chair, another chair. The console which Han Solo listens to communications from. We've obviously got another diagnostic of the Falcon there, looking really cool. As well as a few stats and some timer blocks. The local times around this, I mean, yeah, the local time is it's now 3 o'clock. I think I meant to be cooking something. More controls and things in here, very nice. What do we got over here? Oh, these are like vents and everything like that, and projector blocks. In here as well, more cargo space to the front. Obviously, this is the front of our starship. Very cool. Anything in these car containers? Lots of stuff in those car containers, including a thousand missile containers, as you do. Very nice. Now, I've actually not played with Millennium Falcon in ages in space. It's the last build I had. I left it alone ages ago. 
which was a shame. Uh, oh, there's sound blocks in here. I wonder what they do. Can we access the sound blocks? Sound. What do, what do these do? Oh, they don't do anything. Oh, okay, we'll leave them alone, I guess. Oh, we've got the chairs here, and you'd have the table where they play the game. I forgot to say the name of that now. Oh, I, yeah, I remember it. Um, so you'd have, like, Chewbacca and Luke sat around there playing that game. Very cool. We walk this way, there's the entrance there. We've also got the turrets down here as well. We can hop into the turrets. We do this, we do turn it on, it's already on. And we can control the turret down here, very nice. We can even shoot our own lander gear, which I've just done. That's probably a not good. And I've shot through the floor, let's just ignore that. And I'll see, I've now rip here on the other side of the ship, which is a bit inconvenient, but it's just basically how small the ship is built, um, which determines what side you appear on. But also we've got a top turret up here as well, which if we jump in, uh, we can control this, and we've got the front weapons as well as missiles, and of course we're on the other side of the ship again. Let's just run around here, and we'll get back to the front. Because obviously, as we go up this way, this is the cockpit of Millennium Falcon, you walk up here, obviously there would be seats here, but since this is a small ship in space in we don't actually have room for it, so instead it's just a cockpit. But first, the Millennium Falcon. Built by Krillin Engineering and seen 90 years before the Battle of Yavin. It was actually built that long ago, wow. Heavily modified YT-1300 freighter, cargo freighter. Fastest ship in the galaxy, apparently. Flown by Han Solo and Chewbacca. Used by the Rebel Alliance to defeat the Empire in the Galactic Civil War. Made by the Kessel Run in, and made the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs. I love that bit from Force Awakens, I recently watched it. Isn't this a ship that made the Kessel Run in 14 parsecs? 12. Not the prettiest ship in the fleet, but she's got it, she's got it where it come, uh, counts. I love that show. Space Engineers is absolutely so adapt air yeah, adaptation built by Limbo Relic 32. Right, let's jump in this control seat and see where we go. So our landing gears are locked in the If we rise up, we can then retract our landing gears like that. See, there we go. They look awesome being retracted. And we can jet off. Now, the sim speed is very low in this world. So if you do know Space Engineers, I may have just crashed it slightly there. Um, we'll, we'll ignore that. The sim speed is rather low. Um, I think it's because small blocks, things like that. The game's throwing a hissy fit lately. People who know the game will know what I mean. Um, so what other controls do we have? We have our atmospheric engines, which obviously don't make a difference in this sort of touch here. Uh, oh, it's, that's going to make a difference, isn't it? Oh, we turn them off. Okay. We'll turn them back on to this when I need them. We've got spotlights up front as well. Oh, these are our ground spotlights. We probably should have turned them on earlier. We can... Uh, no, don't lower the ramp. Turn off, turn off. We've got Gatling guns. Those... What is number nine? Obviously our weapon slide, isn't it? Yeah. That kind of, that kind of helps us centralise flying, which is quite cool. Do we have a number two? We have more engines, more turrets. I had an explosion. But this ship is rather fast in space news. Have I shot something again? I have. There you go. Missiles fly away at the front there. They would explode in front of us now. They should do. I don't think explosions are working lately in the game. There you go. They're exploding off in the distance somewhere. But it's quite cool. I'm really enjoying this ship to play around. Like I say, I want to create a battle in it. If you guys would like to see a battle using this ship, make sure to hit that like button and let me down, know in the comments below. But just looking at the exterior of the ship, there isn't much detail, but where there is detail, he has captured it absolutely perfect. We've got the iconic vent set of the background, we've got the radar dish on the side, on the side we've got the landing gears, the turrets, and the other vents for thrusters and things like that. Really cool. And I'm liking it. And do you know what must come next? As a normal Captain Jack video, we must crash the ship. Uh, so we've got to find a good place to actually crash this. I'm thinking let's just dive it down onto the ice. What could possibly go wrong? Isn't it a bit, isn't it a bit from Star Wars where it crashed on? Oh, it's in Force Awakens, isn't it? They crashed on the snow part of Stark it up this. Very interesting. Right, let's crash it. Um, so yeah, very interesting ship. If you'd like to grab hold of this Millennium Falcon, feel free to click the link in the description, which will take you to the Steam page, where you can go and get it for yourself. Let's keep going. Maybe we should try and dive up a bit. I don't know if it's a hurt because we've got thrusters. No, that, we just bounced off. Do we even damage anything? We didn't. Right, let's try crashing again. Sometimes rotors don't like you to crash in space, which is a bit weird, but we'll try again. I think we're heading for that rock, actually. Um, can we dive up a bit? I don't see where we're going to go here. Um, this is not going to help very much. I think we're going to hit the top of it, to be honest. And look at that lens flare. The Falcon flying into it. It's bloody majestic. That's one benefit of Space Deers, is it does look quite cool. Are we going to hit the top of this? Dive. Oh. That's not good. I think we just destroyed the bottom half of the ship, didn't we? We took out the turret, at least. We're going to hit that rock, we are. Steady. Go up. Oh, now that was skimming it just slightly. Uh oh. Well, there we go. Um, we crashed it. Um, that doesn't sound good. I think we're being eaten into the ground again. Didn't expect that one to happen. That's quite surprising. Remember, guys, if you'd like to get this weird and glitchy ship on the workshop, feel free to click the link down below. And if you'd like to see a battle between the ship and a couple of TIE fires, hit that like button and let me know down below in the comments. Are you guys excited for The Last Jedi as well? Please do let me know um, what you think of it. And I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching and goodbye.